Hi everyone, Jerry Lynn Davis, minister to the unsaved and humble servant of Master Jesus Christ. Welcome to the channel. And I am here today to present an important message to you regarding this upcoming season that is called Lent, beginning this day with Ash Wednesday that proceeds into the festival that is called Easter. Before we begin, I'm going to pray and give thanks to the Father, the reason that we're all here today and have the hope through Jesus Christ. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for the blessing of this day. Thank you for your mercy, for your grace, for your loving kindness, for your faithfulness, for your patience, dear Lord. Thank you most of all for Jesus Christ, your precious and only begotten Son. Dear Lord, I pray that you bless this message and that it provides encouragement and it provides the exhortation that is needed, that it brings clarity to the hearts and the minds of those that hear it that they realize there is only one truth, and that is through your Holy Word, inspired by your Holy Spirit. Again, thank you, Lord, for Jesus Christ, your precious only begotten Son. To you be all the glory, dear Heavenly Father. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray, amen. Amen, folks. So again, the celebration that the world calls Easter has nothing to do with the death on the cross and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Easter is in the Bible one time in the book of Acts, chapter 12, and in this context refers to Passover. Passover is one of the seven feasts that the Lord had called his people, the Jews, to acknowledge throughout their generations forever. And it is a remembrance of when the Lord delivered his people out of the 400 years of bondage in Egypt under the hand of his servant Moses. That is what Passover is all about. And that is what Passover, Pesach in the Hebrew, Pascha in the Greek, is translated to Easter in the Bible. Now the world, under the ancient Roman pagans that have carried it on today through pagan Catholicism, they have turned the word Easter into a festival derived from ancient pagan practices that mocks Jesus Christ and has nothing to do with Jesus Christ or the Lord's Passover. It has to do with a celebration of idolatry and pagan Roman practices that worship false gods of fertility, such as Tammuz and Ishtar, or Ashtaroth, or Oster, whose image looks like the Starbucks logo. And culminating with this feast with eggs and flowers and rabbits and all kinds of things in between. These rituals have nothing to do with what the Lord calls us to observe, which is to remember the death on the cross and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Nothing. The Catholics begin this festival of Easter 40 days ahead of time with something they call Lent an Old English word that means spring, the word Lenten. And they begin this 40-day feast with something they call Ash Wednesday. All ancient Roman pagan practices carried on deceptively into today's world that all worldly churches have grasped onto. Now, the day before Ash Wednesday is called Fat Tuesday. Hence the Mardi Gras celebrations, the revelry, the drunkenness, 
the gorging on food, gluttony. This has nothing to do with the Lord God, and he doesn't call us to do these things, folks. The world calls you to do these things. So after Fat Tuesday comes Ash Wednesday, where the Catholics go in and have a fake priest put a cross of ashes on their forehead to remind us that we come from dust and we will return to dust. Well, yes, that is true. The Lord created us from the dust of the ground. He breathed life into us. We became living souls. However, the Lord doesn't call us to observe Ash Wednesday, Lent, or Austere. So we know that all of these things the Catholics have promoted and other churches of other denominations promote as well are lies because they're not in the Bible calling us to observe them. Now there's a false pagan doctrine about Ash Wednesday from the Catholic Encyclopedia, you can find that. The purpose of Lent is to provide that purification by weaning men from sin and selfishness through self-denial and prayer. Another lie, because no amount of self-denial, prayer, fasting, whatever, can purify anyone. We can only be purified through the shed blood of Jesus Christ, folks. The way, the truth, and the life, the only way to the Father. The only way to forgiveness, salvation, and eternal life. That is the true pathway to salvation, the true pathway to hope, the narrow pathway. That means to get off the broad way of all these pagan practices, get on the narrow pathway that leads to Jesus Christ, but doesn't fit in with the world system. Now with the Fat Tuesday, the Mardi Gras, of course there's all these traditions of baking things, like Easter egg bread and king cake and hot cross buns. These are all superstitious, good luck, fertility symbols. And if we go into the Lord's word in the book of Jeremiah chapter 7 verse 18, this was the Lord speaking to one of his prophets during this time, Jeremiah. The children gather wood, and the fathers kindle the fire, and the women knead their dough to make cakes to the queen of heaven, and to pour out drink offerings unto other gods, little g, that they may provoke me to anger. That's the Lord speaking, that they may provoke me to anger. Just as in the Old Testament times, the Jews turned away from the Lord because when he blessed them with their land of Israel, he instructed them to cast out all of their enemies, all of them, to utterly destroy them. They disobeyed the Lord, and this is the result of that. Because the people in the land that the Lord asked to cast out were practicing these idolatrous practices. And the Lord gave them that reason to utterly destroy them because he did not want the Jews to adopt these pagan practices. But since they didn't cast out all of their enemies and utterly destroy them, they disobeyed the Lord, they intermixed with these heathens and adopted their practices, turned their backs on the Lord. It was like a roller coaster ride all through the Old Testament. They turned toward the Lord, they turned away from the Lord. Now, many Jews have accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. However, there are still a lot of them that have not. The Lord has reserved a remnant for himself in the end times. But as a result of this disobedience, these pagan practices are carried on not only through the Jewish people, but through all of us, the Gentiles as well, into the modern world. 
So the Lord is warning us as he did back then. They were baking cakes to the queen of heaven, just as people continue to do today with their Easter rituals of baking Easter bread or partaking of these Mardi Gras things. There is no queen of heaven, Mary, that the Catholics pray to, was not sinless, folks. She lived and died just like everyone else. The Lord chose her to bear Jesus Christ, to bring him into this world, because he was pleased with the way she lived her life. She worshipped the Lord God and was faithful to the Lord God, but she was not sinless. We are all descendants of Adam and Eve, Mary included. When she died, she died the same way everyone dies. So there is no queen of heaven. It's a false god or goddess, whatever. And continuing with the Lent practice of 40 days, Catholics are also called to abstain from meat. This is where the Fish Fry Fridays have come from. And of course, the other churches have grasped onto this. It's a great moneymaker, right? The Lord doesn't call us to abstain from meat. He may call us as his children to maybe fast and pray for a period of time, but he doesn't call us to abstain from meat through these pagan festivals. In the book of 1 Timothy, chapter 4, verses 1 through 5, the Lord warns us about these things. Now the Spirit speaks expressly that in the latter times, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry, which the Catholic priests are not permitted to marry, and commanding to abstain from meats. Hence this Lenten practice of the Fish Five Fridays, right? And of course, also, we get into the whole Agenda 2030 uh, scheme with Bill Gates and all his cronies saying that we have to eat fake meat. That's another part of this end times prophecy here. Commanding to abstain from meats, saying it's not good to eat steak or pork chops or lamb or whatever. That engineered meat grown in the lab is what people must eat. That's what it's coming to. Doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared, seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats, which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving, for it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. That's what it's all about, folks. Faith in Almighty God, not pagan practices. Now, we know these are all false Catholic doctrines. Lent, the 40 days, is actually the pagan feast of one of their false sun gods, Tammuz, T-A-M-M-U-Z. The satanic, the satanic counterfeit of Jesus Christ, who is the true Messiah. We know that Satan, the enemy of our souls, tries to imitate Almighty God. This is his satanic counterfeit of Jesus Christ. A false god carried on from Roman paganism into Catholicism today. Tamas their false god, supposedly died and was resurrected. Counterfeit. If we read in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 8, verses 14 and 15, again, the Lord speaking to one of his prophets. Then he brought me to the door of the gate of the Lord's house, which was toward the north. And behold, there sat women weeping for Tammuz, 
Then said he unto me, Hast thou seen this, O son of man? Turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations than these. Greater abominations than these. Women weeping for Tammuz. And we see women weeping for Tammuz today, folks. I remember way before I was saved, growing up, going to the pagan Catholic church building, having these celebrations of paganism that I wasn't aware of at the time, having a graven image of what was supposed to represent Jesus Christ on the cross, going up into a procession and kissing the feet of this graven image as the fake priest would hold it up for everyone. I was partaking of paganism, not even realizing it, because of the great deception of these Catholics. And it continues today, folks. I am grateful the Lord has brought me out of this deception, and I was saved several years ago, released from the cult, the grip of Catholicism and deception, and given the hope of Jesus Christ through salvation. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. But that is another example of women weeping for Tammuz. That representation that the Catholics use, that graven image on that cross, is a representation of their false Messiah, Tammuz, on that cross. That's what that's all about, folks. Idolatrous abomination to Almighty God. Now, the true Passover which has nothing to do with this Easter that people celebrate today, is found in the book of Exodus, chapter 12. The Lord calls his people to celebrate Passover the same time every year throughout their generations, the same time, the same date every year. So why is the date of Easter or Oster on the calendar different every year because pagans worship the sun, right? So the pagan sun worshiper, Emperor Constantine, embraced the Catholic system back then and adopted the Catholic Church as the official Roman state religion. Many people are deceived and believe Catholics are Christians. They are not, folks. They are practicing paganism. You cannot mix truth and lies together. Just as when I was practicing Catholicism years ago, I was not a Christian. So people today are not Christians that are doing it either. Very important. And that's another great deception. So because of Constantine grasping on to this. He was a player, desired to mix paganism and what he called Christianity together to adopt the Roman pagan practices, which is the result of the modern Catholic church today. So because of the Council of Nicaea in 325 AD, they determined that the date of their Oster or Easter would be celebrated on the first Sunday after the first full moon following the vernal or spring equinox, the day when a lot of pagans flock to Stonehenge, an altar to paganism, when the days of daylight are equal to the days of darkness, spring equinox. So that's where the pagan date of Easter on the calendar today is determined. That's what it's all about. Now, Jesus Christ and his apostles, they never observed the Feast of Tammuz. They never observed Lent. They never observed Ash Wednesday, right? The Jews were not called to observe it, and neither are we. So knowing this truth, 
if you are practicing these things, if you have gotten a cross of ashes on your forehead, it doesn't give you extra points. In fact, it marks you as being abomination before Almighty God. Wipe those ashes off your forehead. Get down on your knees, repent, and turn from these pagan ways, folks. The Lord calls his true servants, his true children, to turn away from the world and the worldly practices. If you are a friend of the world, you are the enemy of Almighty God. He says that in his word, the book of James chapter 4. You are his enemy. And we are all created in the image of Almighty God, but we are not all his children until we are saved and serving Jesus Christ. So don't believe the lies that the Pope or anyone else tries to tell you that we're all God's children. We are not his children until we are saved and serving Jesus Christ. So someone that practices a false belief is not a child of God because they have set themselves apart from him with heathen practices. You can't mix it together, folks. There's no compromise here. Again, we are called to distance ourselves. Come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and I will receive you. Touch not the unclean thing. Walk away from the pagan practices. Walk away from the Easter egg hunts, the Easter egg trees, the rabbits, the Easter bunny, the Easter parade, the Easter outfits, the gluttony, the revelry. Walk away from it. If you truly desire to spend eternity with Jesus Christ, you will heed this warning. I pray the Lord gets your attention. In Jesus' name, amen.